Welcome to Paddlecraft Safety. One of the goals of this program is for you to develop basic canoeing skills for calm water. This video will demonstrate how to get on the water, the basic strokes and what they are used for, how to go straight in the water, and how to respond to a capsize. To launch in shallow, calm water, Lift the canoe and place it in the water perpendicular to shore. Either end will work. The person whose boat position is closest to shore, here it's the bowman, steadies the canoe while the other steps into the center and moves into position. When moving in a canoe, always maintain three points of contact, two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. The best paddling position, particularly to learn the strokes, is to rest your weight on the edge of the seat with your knees down and out of the way. After the first person is in position, the second boards. Slow, deliberate movements with good communication help prevent upsets whenever paddlers move about the boat. Here, the weight of the person in the bow causes the canoe to touch bottom, which is fairly common. Rather than scrape and shove off, that person can back up slightly to lift the front of the canoe and then move forward. That often provides enough extra depth to paddle away. And now we can back up. Coming into shore, you reverse the process. You can also launch and land parallel to shore, at a pier for instance. Only a few basic strokes are needed to move the canoe where you wish. Let's cover each stroke and what they are used for. The forward stroke is the workhorse that provides power in both the bow and the stern. Rotate your leading shoulder forward and drop the paddle blade into the water. Ideally, the paddle shaft is nearly vertical. Keep your lower arm straight and pull against the shaft to slide the canoe forward. Recover the paddle with the blade feathered flat to the water to avoid wind resistance. The power phase ends as your hips draw even with the paddle. Don't lift water by jerking the paddle upwards at the end, but rather continue pulling back at boat speed as you slice the blade out of the water. Try to pace yourself. Rhythmic strokes with short power phases and relaxed recoveries are good for cruising. The back stroke is a near opposite of the forward stroke. It's used to stop the canoe and to move backwards. The draw is used to move the canoe sideways toward the side the paddle is on. Reach out sideways and pull the boat to the paddle. Feather in the water by rotating the grip and slicing the blade back out. The pry is used to move sideways in the opposite direction. You can use the top edge of the canoe as a fulcrum. If one person does a draw while the other does a pry, the entire canoe will move sideways. Reverse who does which stroke to move sideways in the opposite direction. If both paddlers do a draw, the canoe will rotate toward the side the bow paddle is on. Simultaneous prize will rotate the boat in the opposite direction. Sweeps are used for turning. In the bow, the paddle sweeps an arc from the bow to the side of the paddler. Pulling back as shown is a forward sweep. Pushing forward is a reverse sweep. In the stern, the arc is from the stern to the paddler side. Here, combined forward and reverse sweeps pivot the canoe. Going straight with two paddlers is not that difficult, but seldom comes naturally. It takes teamwork and initial concentration on how the canoe responds to the paddle. Once learned, it becomes automatic, but it does take practice to get to that stage. You can tell how a novice typically looks. Knees in the air and both paddles on the same side are signs of beginners. Paddling on the same side quickly moves the canoe off course. Switching sides snakes the canoe back in the desired direction, but it then goes off course in the opposite direction. The typical response is to then randomly switch sides as each paddler attempts an independent course correction. It's clear from the previous demonstration that the key to going straight is coordination. 
paddle in unison on opposite sides and match the force of your strokes. If you start going off course, don't switch sides or speed up to add extra strokes. Instead, keep the same stroke rate, but adjust your power to keep the proper heading. If both paddlers apply exactly the same power in the absence of wind and current, the bow will still drift away from the side the stern paddler is using. Minor corrections are made by the stern paddler turning the thumb of the grip hand toward the water as the power phase of the stroke is ending. The J stroke is often described as a forward stroke with a hook at the end. That's okay for a major correction, but typically applies much more correction than is needed, causing the path of the canoe to wobble. It also slows the boat down. Often, the stern paddler can maintain course using a simple rudder at the end of the stroke. That may temporarily break the rhythm of tandem paddlers, but the stern paddler can easily get back into cadence by skipping a stroke. Here's a modification of the J stroke that works well without breaking the cadence. As the paddle nears the hip, the blade is pulled toward the canoe and then back into line as it is rotated underwater. The amount of correction is adjusted by when the rotation starts, how much rotation is used, and how far the blade is slipped sideways under the side of the canoe. As you are learning the steering stroke, go slowly. At the end of the stroke, check that the thumb of your grip hand points down and that the paddle blade is parallel to the canoe. Pay attention to how the canoe reacts. Solo paddling is not part of the paddlecraft safety course. However, it is a good way to develop canoe sense and test your mastery of various steering strokes. There is another method for going straight used in long-distance canoe races. Canoers paddle on opposite sides, but switch sides together on a signal from the paddler in the stern when the canoe begins to drift off course. Stroke mechanics and paddle lengths are modified slightly since marathon racers sit on seats with their legs extended and braced, also because they use bent shaft paddles. Bent shaft paddles are sometimes used for calm water canoeing by those using traditional steering techniques. Much is written about the relative merits of straight shaft and bent shaft paddles, but little proof is offered. Both work well in flat water. The emphasis in paddlecraft safety is on straight shaft paddles since they work well both in calm water and white water. This course does not prepare you for white water, but it is a first step. Properly loaded canoes aren't that unstable, but capsize is still a possibility. You should remember the importance of proper fit for a life jacket from safety afloat training. Make sure yours and your buddies are the correct size and properly adjusted before you go on the water. A life jacket that rides near or above ear level is not as effective as it should be. The first concern after a capsize is with the safety of the canoeists. Buddies in the same canoe should immediately check the condition of each other, followed quickly by a check from the buddy boat. Exposure to cold water is a common concern. The best course of action may be to swim the boat to shore, particularly if it is loaded with gear. However, a canoe over canoe assist is another option for calm water. The buddy boat comes alongside the swamped canoe and checks again on the condition of those in the water. Loose gear is moved from one boat to the other. Those in the water are moved to the ends of the upright boat. The person in the bow turns around and moves to the center. The swamped canoe is turned upside down and perpendicular to the upright canoe. The next step is to lift the end of the swamped canoe to rest on the gunwale of the upright canoe. That is sometimes a bit tricky since an air gap is needed to prevent air pressure from holding the boat down. The swamped boat is then slid bottom up across the upright canoe. Once the canoe is balanced, it is rotated top side up and then slid back into the water on the same side it was lifted from. When the emptied canoe is resting alongside of the assisting boat, those in the water are moved back to the side of their boat. The helpers steady the emptied canoe while its crew reboards one at a time. The challenge is to let the sides of the canoe rotate enough to make it easy to get back in, 
but not so much that water is taken on. After the crew is back on board, gear is transferred and the procedure is complete. Depending on the weather, a trip to shore may still be needed for a change into dry clothes. That completes the overview of basic canoeing skills. Go slowly when you first try these on the water. Canoe sense and mastery will come with practice. Be patient and happy paddling. <laughs>